I'm a bit of a spark plug. The doc's aware. I say that. Granby out. Welcome to the Brandon Shank Podcast. If you're anything like me, you know that the way you dress says a lot about the person you are. And you also know that the brand you wear doesn't necessarily mean anything about style. I I want you to imagine. You walk into a club wearing the finest garb this side of the Mediterranean, and a person of your preferred gender who you find attractive comes up to you and immediately starts telling you how incredibly gorgeous you are. They continue to tell you, Hey! You look like one of those girls on TikTok. How the world hasn't been graced with such a beauty since the goddess Persephone walked the earth above. It's at that moment you both lock eyes and both of your brains begin creating DMT in simultaneous fashion. As both of you cascade into oblivion from the heroic dose of God serum, you realize that this moment has been had over and over in time and you suddenly get rushed into a vortex of blue and pink stardust. Stellar nebulas are whooshing by you at amazing speeds. It's at this moment that you realize that those two openings are coming closer and closer to your face. They are wrapped around you. As you try to pull them off, there's nothing you can do. Suddenly, you no longer feel your arms. You no longer have access to your bodily functions. You can no longer feel anything around you. And right at the moment that you think that you are about to die, you wake up and those two holes that you saw in front of you were your eyes and you look around and you see a group of people surrounding you asking you did you feel it now when you shop shank513.com these are the kind of effects that might happen to you in your day-to-day life if that sounds like something that you're into Please feel free to shop shank513.com where you get free shipping on all orders in the United States. Um, I try to keep the orders nice and cheap and everything there is designed by yours truly, Brandon Shank. Welcome back to the second episode of the Brandon Shank podcast. Um, In this episode, I think I'm going to dive deeper into my history between like when I decided that I wanted to paint and my senior year you guys seemed really intrigued by that a majority of you people reached out to me and said that that was really interesting so I figured it would be um, even more interesting to kind of give you how I felt at that time tell you a little bit of stories about what was going on at that time and yeah so I hope you guys enjoy this podcast as always let's get into it So I guess I should start um, earlier than my senior year. So my sophomore year, I started dating a girl and we have been together for about a decade. Um, Not exactly a decade, but I mean, close enough. I mean, we weren't married or anything, but it sure as hell felt like it. I mean, at one point we lived together and I knew everything about her. She knew everything about me. And we had been through so much shit that it just, I mean, we were tight. Um, but my junior year, um, like I said, I wasn't always the brightest kid, dude. Um, I, I was, I came from a, a house where my mom and dad were together. So, I mean, I had that going for me, but we weren't always like well off with money. And I, regardless of that, I still came out like a somewhat spoiled kid. So I still had the world to shock me a little bit. Um, but anyways, I cheated on my girlfriend and it blew up and everybody in my close circle of friends ended up finding out about this shit. And I, like a dumbass, like lied about it to everybody. And then, you know, I don't know if you know what happens when you lie, but it eventually comes out. So it eventually came out and yeah, but basically what happened is somebody found out that I had cheated on her and they called the girl that I had cheated on her with and like threatened to beat her up and all this shit. And like this person was an adult and they were also on probation and all this shit. So they ended up getting in trouble because that girl pressed charges and stuff. And because of that, my girlfriend had to go move away and I didn't get to see her for a while. 
Um, we remained in contact over cell phone and all that kind of stuff, but it, you know, it is what it is. Um, after that, um, we got back together. Uh, well, I shouldn't, I mean, we didn't really break up, so I shouldn't say we got back together, but I went down to pick her up in Kentucky. She was right on the border of Tennessee, so it was like a three-hour drive. I drove back, and she was staying at this place called the Mason Inn, and it's on Mason Montgomery Road in Mason, Ohio. And the this place is kind of sketchy. I'm not going to lie. Like It's like $60 for a night, and, I mean, what are you going to do there for $60 a night besides shoot up, uh, shoot in somebody, or, like, shoot somebody, you know? Like, there's that's really what you got going for you. So they're staying at the Mason Inn like full time. Like this is their place of residence. And I mean, I don't knock that. I mean, what am I going to say? Like, I'm, I'm not in the best situation myself. Like I'm 25 and I'm still living with my parents, you know? I mean, call me what you want. I don't give a fuck, but like, you'll soon find out that my life isn't exactly perfect. Um, but yeah, so we're back together. She's staying at the Mason Inn. And then one night we go to Walmart to return some shit and we get into an argument. And this argument is pretty loud. Like it's pretty like noticeable. Like people are like it's drawing attention to people and somebody calls the cops. And this person was like, I would say a football field and a half away. Like I was on one side of the parking lot and they were on the other side of the parking lot. The fact that they could even like hear or see me is just a matter of pure like shit of the universe um but this person called the police after saying like leave her alone and all this shit and i walk inside of walmart and i come back out and they're like somebody said that you were beating on your girlfriend and i'm like uh what the fuck i am 18 years old i'm not beating on my girlfriend and all this shit and my girlfriend there is also saying that he wasn't hitting me but the thing is is that she's 16 we're only one year apart but it's not yet her birthday um so well wait i take that back she might have just turned 17 yeah she just turned 17 but it didn't matter because she was a minor it didn't matter what she said the the city of mason was pressing charges on me which it's the fuck am I going to do? Um, I'm sitting there and the police officer is like, you shouldn't hit a woman. And I'm like, I didn't. And she's like, right, but you really shouldn't hit a woman. And I'm like, I didn't. And she's like, right. But anyways, so she was beyond stupid. She ended up getting shot at Kroger whenever some dude like, you know, was like, he barricaded himself inside of Kroger with an AK-47 and started killing people, shooting people. I don't know if he killed anybody. It was so long ago, but, um, yeah, that happened and she ended up getting shot. Um, after she says this, she takes my girlfriend home and to Mason Inn and she leaves me there with two other police officers. I'm in handcuffs. They put me in the back of the, of the car and as I'm sitting in the back of the car, I'm looking at them, look at my car and like they're, they're at the trunk. Mind you, when I walked out of Walmart, they pulled their guns on me when I was by my car, told me to drop my keys. So I threw my keys in my car and I shut the door and they came up and handcuffed me. So, uh, they put me in the back of the car and they're standing at my trunk. They have no reason to like go through my shit. Like the, the car has nothing to do with this scenario come to find out the person who had called the cops on me told them that they pulled up behind my car saw through my car window that i was punching my girlfriend repeatedly let me just put a fucking like wet towel over that fire immediately i drive a very tinted windowed car it is dark outside how are you going to pull up behind of my pontiac grand prix which already you can't see into the back of, and tell me that you saw me do this. When the argument even happened outside of the car. So this person made something up to the point to where they knew that if there were cameras to prove this, there'd be no way for me to prove that I didn't do this. Um, but they just start searching my car for no reason. Um, and of course, like they find weed 
And but and no, 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 they didn't even find weed. I didn't have weed on me. I was going to go buy weed like my my I get out of jail and my dealer's like, yo, you on your way? No, I'm not on my way. I'm in fucking handcuffs. Anyway, so they they find all this. They take me to jail and they they don't even know what to charge me with. Like they pull out these books to look for things to charge me with because they have no reason to hold me there. So they find this like shitty fucking thing like attempt to commit an assault or they they claimed assault on a minor or what what I don't I don't know. It was so many years ago, like 10 years, uh well, 7 years ago, but um they put me in this like drunk tank and there's this crazy ass dude, mind you, I am 18 years old and I am a band nerd. You know, like I think that uh 69 is hilarious. I'm sitting in this fucking jail with this dude who is crazy drunk. He just wants his shoes. He's yelling about phone calls, telling me that like, you know, like it's, it's crazy shit. Finally, he gets out of there and I'm the only one in there. And they're like, you got to call your dad. Your dad's already calling in. And I'm like, oh shit, my dad knows. So I call them and my dad's like, are you all right? What happened? I explained to them what happened and they said that you're not going to be able to get out until Monday. This is Friday night at like fucking midnight right now. Um, I hang up the phone. They make me get a shower. They watch me shower. They watch me shower. Traumatizing. They make me bend over and cough, of course. Like, like everything you see in these fucking like television shows, they make me do. It's pretty fucking stupid. Um, they make they make me wash off. They make me do all this stuff. And then they give me my orange jumpsuit. Um, which nobody can make look good. Unless you're built like Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm sorry. You know. And, and nobody in there is built like Stone Cold Steve Austin. They're all on fucking heroin or meth. Or some other narcotic. But anyways, I digress. I get in there. And they're telling me, don't tell anybody your charges because it's assault on a minor. And I am the only one in this pod with a yellow wristband. Yellow wristbands mean I'm a violent offender. Again, I'm a band nerd, but I'm a violent offender. I am. They tell me that I have to walk down to my pod. So one guard stands at the like holding area and the guard that is or the corrections officer that's at the pod at the end of the hall walks out into like the little like double door areas kind of like in a spaceship where like you go in it sucks all the air out and then you can go out into space well it's kind of like that except for jail that was a good analogy um so i have to walk down this hall as they watch me and to the left i see that it's b pod or c i think it's c pod i think c pod were the people that were like you know people who murdered people you know that's fun shit and i glad i'm not in there but i get in there and lo and behold my bunkie is a guy who lived on top of the hill from me i didn't know him personally but i knew his uh sister and his sister was kind of violent so it didn't surprise me that he was in here um doesn't matter he's he's not really relevant in this situation but i just thought it was a little fun little tidbit so I try, it's like two o'clock in the morning and believe it or not, I actually get some sleep and it's crazy. I cannot believe that I actually went to sleep. I don't know if it's like some sort of like primal thing where your body is like in a stressful situation and it still knows that it has to sleep because I would still wake up for stuff. So yeah, but I would have these now I smoked weed every single day prior to that. So I start having these vivid dreams like I'm dreaming about Bill Cosby working at Dunkin Donuts with me him and I are bouncing on bouncing balls so high that I get a bird's eye view of like above Dunkin Donuts and the grocery store across the street and all this stuff it's intense it's I have to save my parents from mad scientists it's you know there's all kinds of stuff you should sit down I should sit down and tell you guys tell you guys about my dreams sometimes it, they're intense but I wake up the next morning because they're asking me if I want breakfast. Of course, I don't want fucking breakfast. I'm not hungry. I'm not going to eat this shitty jail food. Um, 
And they asked me in my before if I had medications. I didn't have medications, and everybody else that had medications at this time had to take their morning meds. But we had rec time, and rec time was, like, the only time that you could make cell phone calls and all that shit. And I just called my mom and dad, like, what am I going to do? Who else am I going to call? I'd call my grandma. They told me I wasn't allowed to contact my girlfriend at the time because she was a part of the case. So, I mean, that makes sense. But, like, I just want to call her and be like, did you tell them, like, that I hit you? Like, why am I in here? I'm so confused. Because I was confused. Like, I didn't do anything. I didn't know why I was in there. Like, I'm bawling my eyes out in front of these grown-ass adults. Um, Luckily, they're, like, cool dudes, if I'm being honest. They ended up being really cool dudes. Well, I'll get to that. Um, So I'm in jail. And the next morning, like I said, I'm there. And this is the first thing that I fucking see okay, is a fight, um, so I am, the, the, the jail pod is set up like a rectangle, so if you're looking at a rectangle, on the top left part of the rectangle is kind of where my bunk was, and also in this corner of the room was where a TV was, and there were some chairs set up at this TV, so people are there gathered around, they're watching country music videos, um, because that's what the fuck they want to watch, country music videos. I mean, they're hill jacks that are strung out, and they're coming down off of heroin. Which, by the way, coming down off of heroin is really not as terrible as people think. It's really not as bad. Like, it's like a bad flu, you know? Like, people die from it, don't get me wrong, but it's not as bad as coming off of benzodiazepines or alcohol. Like, that shit will kill you. Um, The worst part is, is, like, being so high that you don't know that you're in jail. Uh, one night while I was in there, it was like the third night that I was in there, a guy just starts screaming at the top of his lungs like, ah, ah, where am I? I don't know where I am. Because he was so high when he was arrested, when he finally comes to, he has no idea that he's in jail. Could you imagine your life just being ruined that way? And Incre- I mean, his life was probably already ruined before that, let's face it. He was fucking on drugs. But I'm getting back to my point. The... They're watching country music videos, and this one dude walks up and just changes the channel in front of all these people. And this guy decides he's going to be Billy Badass, walks up and goes, Hey, man, what the hell you doing? He goes, the other guy goes, Don't nobody want to watch country music videos. He goes, Who here don't want to watch no country music videos? And nobody raises their hand because everybody there was watching the country music. That's all they're fucking playing there, bro. On that TV, it's country music videos. At the one across the hall, it's AMC. So you'll watch like The Walking Dead. You'll see these old ass TV shows. And so they get into the spackle and then arguing back and forth. Finally, one of them looks at each other and goes, you want to take us to the bathroom? He goes, let's go. So these dumb motherfuckers are wearing their orange jumpsuits down below their fucking asses. They're waddling like fucking penguins to the bathroom. And everybody knows what's about to go down in this fucking place. Everybody starts coming in. The CO, the guard, just stands there, bro. And my bunkie just goes, this is about to get all bad. And he gets up out of his bunk to try to watch from his bunk they walk into the bathroom and all you all i can see from my bunk is this dude's head get bounced off the fucking toilet um not toilet sink sorry get bounced off the fucking sink and and the corrections officer slowly walks over to it like he's letting them get their fight out and it's terrifying like this is like the first thing i'm seeing after waking up i'm fucking terrified i don't want to get out of my bunk now you know i don't want to piss anybody off i don't know what the fuck the deal is and it's actually a really nice day in October. So they've got the day, the doors open during rec time and shit. Um, nobody can get outside. Like they've got like a little triangle, triangular little area for people to hang out in. But nobody can get outside of the walls. So it's, I mean, it's a nice little area for people to hang out. But people go out there and smoke. They just can't climb out because the walls are like 26 feet tall. Um... So I asked my bunkie, I'm like, what the, f- like, I don't want to get, like, killed. What the, what, what do I, what are the rules? Like, there's no rules, he says. Like, it's not, like, television or anything. Um, and, you know, nobody's in there for, like, life. They're all in there either waiting for court or they're in there on probation or, you know, like, they just have a small meaningless charge that they got handed to them in court. And the court was just like, stay where you're at until you finish up your whatever. 
So he's like, there's a library there. You do your phones. You have to wait in line. Um, this phone sucks. That phone sucks. This phone, you have to like wrap the cord around and shit. Um, but yeah. And I mean, yeah, like they said, he said there's a commissary kiosk, but I was, I was hopefully not going to be there till Tuesday. I was hoping to get out on fucking Monday. So I didn't want to use anything, any money in the commissary if I wasn't going to get anything. And you know, the first night I'm kind of scared. I'm just kind of chilling. Um, it, it's about, I'm taking lots of naps reflecting on my life because I'm like, how did I get in this position? Like what choices did I make that led me here? I'm, I'm, I, I've got this cot that I'm laying on. That's really just a fucking piece of metal. I've got this sh pillow. That's not even a pillow. It's a, sh it's a blanket that you roll up and you've got this shitty ass, like sheet that's supposed to be a blanket and I'm covered up underneath this blanket on the top bunk and I'm directly in front of a TV. So if I peek my head out, the entire jail is staring at me. So I, I just kind of chill there. I'm not, I'm, I don't want to move around or nothing. So like I said, around the middle of the day, um, I start getting a little, I don't know, like I, I need to stretch my legs or some shit. So I start walking around and I stopped in the library and I grabbed a book. And the book I grabbed was a book I was supposed to read in English class called A Separate Piece. Um, I did not read this book in English class. I didn't read a lot of books in English class, if I'm being honest with you. Thankfully, there's the internet and there were spark notes. But when it came to homework, it just... I'm like, why are you giving me homework? Why? I'm not... I don't want to go home and do this. And in fact, I'm not going to go home and do this. I, I just did not want to. So, I digress. Getting back to the story. I'm reading this book. I go through about, like, two books. I forget the other book I read, but I'm in there for four days, and I go through two books, which is pretty decent. I'm a, I mean, I can read fast. I've always been able to read fast, so it, it worked out to my benefit that I just had solitude, I guess. Um, I mean, not to my benefit. I don't know why I said that. But, so, that night this guy comes in and he's this big i would say like he's taller than me i'm sure and he's every bit of like 400 pounds i'm assuming like he's a big boy and he's walking in and they try to put him in this cell with a dude with an oxygen tank and he's like i can hear him like he's over by the door and i'm all the way at the back and i can hear him tell this little tiny guard of a woman corrections officer of a woman I ain't getting in that cell. And she goes, yes, you are. He walks into this cell, picks up the other dude, because there's three bunks in a cell. He picks up the other dude, who's like my size, and throws him, um, I would say, about seven feet. Picks him up and throws him. I'm I'm not wanting to get out of bed. I, I have not eaten. I don't want to get out of bed now. So they tase this black dude. He jumps up and goes, this shit is real, y'all. And then fucking, like, gets arrested and gets put in the hole. Um, I don't see this guy anymore after that. So next day, the Bengals game is on. I'm still taking naps. I feel like I haven't slept in days when I'm at this place. It's probably just the, just the depression kicking in, and that's why I'm sleeping so much. But a Bengals game is on, and I don't fuck with football at all. But the rest of the entire jail does. And the corrections officers, I mean, they become like, I, won't, I wouldn't necessarily say friends, but if you're good to the COs, they're good to you. So they're like, if you guys are good after rec time and you guys are quiet, I'll keep the Bengals game on. So, again, I don't participate in rec time. I don't trust these fuckers. Like, some of these are in here for, I don't know what the fuck they're in here for. I think there might be pedos and shit. And I got long hair. I look like fucking Justin Bieber if he was born in a fucking holler. So, I, I'm not saying I'm not ugly. I'm just saying I'm kind of pretty. Not necessarily Justin Bieber status, but I, I would understand if a dude tried to butt fuck me. Why? You know what I'm saying? Anyways, so I just want to chill. So I, I pass out and then I wake up and I look up and the entire jail I feel like is staring at me. But it's just because they're watching the Bengals game behind me. So I look up and I go, oh shit. 
and I just lay my head right the fuck back down and I went right back to sleep. Like I was terrified, dude. I didn't want to get in the way of their TV and get yelled at, you know what the fuck I'm saying? So yeah, I wake back up and I end up like talking to my bunkie and he has some dudes come to our, like, I would say cell, but like they're only half walled cells. I don't know if you've seen orange is the new black. They're not like seven foot tall cells with bars. They're half walled cells. They don't have doors and like, yeah, there's a bunk bed and then one single cot. And we have like a bunch of people crowding around our cell, just talking to us and shit. And they're asking me what the fuck I did. I'm just telling them I'm talking shop. Like, I'm just trying to fit in. Like, I don't know how long I'm going to be here. I'm hoping just till Monday, but who knows? Like, I got assault on a minor charge. Like, who the fuck knows what's going to happen? So I'm just talking shop. I end up the confidence of walking around again. And I talked to this one dude named Danny who was in there on heroin. He called it boy. Um, apparently boy and girl are two different things. One's snorting, one's shooting when it comes to heroin. Uh, maybe somebody can help me out with that, but yeah. And you know, he was a good dude. He, we sat there and talked. He gave me some good advice, um, about like what to do in this situation and shit, like what's going to happen when I get out. And it put a lot my mind at ease a lot because everybody else in there was kind of stupid, but this guy was, he was pretty intelligent and that was, it was good to have somebody to talk to. Um, and then that night, well, that day, the guy that was in the cell behind me uh, came back from court. And I have I forgot to mention this. I have not eaten at all. I refuse to eat. If you guys could see this fucking food, you would not want to eat either. There's like the cheeseburger they gave us. The burger they gave us came on the hot plate and they put the cheese separately from the burger on the hot plate. So they gave you melted fucking cheese. What am I supposed to do? Scoop this up with my finger and like slide it on the burger? Disgusting. So I would give my plate to fucking people because, I mean, I'm not in there for very long. And I know that they're hungry. Like, they don't give you a lot. So I gave my food to people. And not like in a fucking bitch way or nothing. Like, I didn't give a shit. I'm six foot four. I ain't scared of nobody. Like, I'll defend myself. But I just, I didn't want to eat. And they knew that. So I gave them my food. But... Um, where was I? So the food I haven't eaten, they gave you like this goulash. Anybody know what goulash is? It's like noodles, meat, and tomato sauce. No, they gave you tomato water. Like if they, like, if you chopped up a tomato, you know, that water that like gets on the fucking like cutting board. Imagine they like took all that water, put it into like some noodles and some fucking like meat. And that's what they gave you. That's costing. Which one of you don't know how to flush the toilet after you're taking a shot? So... I'm giving my meal to people. Um, so I'm hungry, believe it or not. I don't know if you can tell. Like, I'm hungry. And this guy comes back from court, and they gave him a bologna sandwich with mustard packets and American cheese. I could tell you right now. I, I could feel that bread pressing to the roof of my mouth. I was so hungry. And... It, he's he, I'm watching him eat this and I'm so jealous and next thing you know he pulls out a little fucking bag and he's got I, I don't know what's in it to this day I don't know what it was but him and this fucking like he had this like dude who had some like gangrene looking shit on his arm and then there was another dude in there who had it on his forearm Um, they started like smoking did not get caught I don't know what they were smoking on. I went to bed. I was not getting involved in that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm in here. I'm trying to get out. Um, but, yeah, they did not get in trouble. Uh, there was a girl corrections officer. She had glasses, and she was cool with that dude that came in from court. So I'm assuming he felt comfortable. I mean, he was pretty comfortable because she was in there and nothing happened. But, <sighs> yeah. 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 Anyways, um... So yeah, court day. I gotta go to court. I haven't showered in three days, bro. I got long hair. I look like I'm homeless. I have to shower in jail. Do you know how to shower in jail? You walk into the place where there's a shower and you stand there butt naked in front of men. Yeah. I'm not cutting out this silence. I want you to sit there and think about that. 
So I have to ask the corrections officer for soap. They give you soap, shampoo, conditioner, and shaving cream all in one packet. I don't know where I can get this today, but if I could get this today, I would buy it. Could you imagine the 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 necessities that you could just knock out with one little packet? Just shampoo, conditioner, shaving cream. If they could add like a body lotion, a mouthwash, you know what I'm saying? Maybe like some some oh, what if it was like a like a hand sanitizer? That'd be kind of cool too. But yeah. So, I'm getting ready for court. I got court. I go to court. And they give me pre-trial probation. I'm fucking pumped. I get the fuck out. Hell yeah, boy. I'm getting out of jail. Which, by the way, I never thought I would be in jail. My life did not, you know, like I had an older brother who was not necessarily the best role model. So I was not going to jail in my mind. But for some reason, I ended up in fucking jail, bro. Um, but yeah, I'm getting out of jail. I'm happy. My parents, I came to see me. I forgot to mention that visitation. Um, my parents came to see me on Sunday and my mom bawled her eyes out because she saw me in an orange jumpsuit. If you go to my Facebook, you can see my mugshot. Um, I'm not wearing the orange jumpsuit, but you can see how angry I look. I kept that face the entire fucking time, bro. I me mugged everybody because I was like so pissed that I was there. I didn't even do anything again. I will say that. And I'm still say I mean, I had weed on me, you know? But I'm in Ohio. It's decriminalized, son. I should not be in jail for not having weed, just having paraphernalia. I had a grinder and I had a fucking pipe. And they got me with that shit. Like, so, <clears throat> anyways, getting back to the story. I'm getting out and I pack everything up. I, they tell me not to tell anybody that I'm getting out because they'll beat my ass before I get out. So I don't tell nobody. They call my name to hear your name called in jail to say that it's time to pack up and go oh my god dude that, i i don't know how it feels to win the lottery but i'm assuming it feels similar to that my guy like it is so that and then having your name called for visitation like it's i listen i'm sitting here talking like this i was in there for four days again four days four days four days there are people who are in there for life for 30 years people go to prison with hardened fucking criminals and like I came out like this, telling you guys stories about this. Like, it, like I traumatized me with this amount of shit. Imagine what it does to other people, dude. People come out saying, like, oh, it wasn't that bad. Oh, really? I want you to look at these people that tell you that it wasn't that bad and tell me if their life is actually, like, a picture-perfect kind of Hallmark card life. I guarantee they got some shit going on. Anyways, I digress. I get out, and... They tell me that I have to go across the street to get my GPS monitor on. This GPS monitor, um, it's like 10 or $20 a day, like I said in the last podcast, and I have to pay on it every two weeks. I can't let it go over $200. Like, I can build up a day, two days to $40, three days to $60, but I can't let it go over $200. So I guess it's $10 a day. And they tell me that if I do, I can go to jail. So I figure out, that um you know somebody had told my boss in a joking manner that i was talking shit about another employee and i fucking wasn't like i don't talk shit about people especially not to customers and the guy was joking around and my boss still cut my hours about that and it hurt my feelings because like i thought she knew my character i thought she understood like i had integrity like i don't talk crap about people like that and still she cut my hours and it took me directly talking to that customer aside and like saying she cut my hours and he reached out to her and told her and she fixed my hours but in the meantime of that happening i had to pick up hours from my friends and luckily i did because i don't know what would have happened she was giving me four hours a week making eight dollars an hour dude uh that's not doing nothing and i gotta go to school i i gotta you know i gotta i, I got things i gotta do so it yeah yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? I don't feel like I had to explain this. Like, that's kind of shitty stuff. But anyways, I have to, I start looking at other jobs. I start applying to, like, Best Buy and shit. Who the fuck wants to work at Best Buy besides the... Anyways, we'll get there. So, um, I get this GPS monitor on, and I finally leave. The first place that I make my parents stop at on the way home is Joe Mart in Lebanon because 
I was fucking starving. I get me a pizza hoagie. I've never had a hoagie in my life, but boy, does this sound good. I get me some like little microwave cheeseburgers wrapped in foil. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. Those things is damn good when I got out of jail. Um, and yeah. So the thing with this GPS monitor, you have to charge it. And the way that you charge it is not like a regular like snap and plug or anything. It's a little shitty magnet. So the way that you had to do this at night when you slept, if you wanted to sleep while it charged, you had to tie it around your leg. So that way, like when you pulled, it didn't pull on the cord itself. It pulled on the knot that's wrapped around your leg. And you would then attach that magnet to where it needed to be. And then... I mean, it wouldn't roll off. Like, it was strong enough that if you tossed and turned, like, it wouldn't come off. But, you know, it was still shitty that you had to tie it around your leg. And this thing would rub on your ankle all the fucking time. So I took a sock, and I cut the bottom of the sock up, and I rolled it up like a donut. And I used that to pull the ankle monitor up off my ankle, and it worked out really well, actually. But to this day, I have no hair on my ankle from that experience, like... I mean, a hair grows back, like I can pluck stuff, but there's just no follicles there, I guess. I don't know what happened. But yeah. So they tell me that I can't talk to 18 year olds, which, you know, or minors. I can talk to 18 year olds. I can't talk to minors, and I gotta go to school. So I'm not allowed to talk to fucking minors, and I gotta go to school. What the hell? I'm a minor myself by fucking like proxy. So the resources officer at the school is notified by the county that he has to watch me to make sure that I don't talk to people. They call me down to the office and all this kinds of shit. Well, long story short, after all that, like, it's just a shitty thing. You know, like I already told you, I had to pick up shifts from people. Um, It ended up working out with the whole work thing. um, And yeah, but... I've got this ankle monitor on. The first ankle monitor I had, I had multiple ankle monitors. I had to have the first one plugged into a wall while I was at work. Otherwise, it would notify my resources officer or corrections officer that he needed to come. Corrections officer, resource. It's a fucking probation officer. It would notify my PO that he had to come, like, come and fucking find me. It would stop, you know, pinging my location. So I had to have it plugged in and I'm running around making people's fucking coffees on front counter plugged into the wall like I'm a fucking robot so they come out change it while I'm at work embarrassing as fuck um he's sitting here talking about how embarrassing it is for him because he's a cop and I'm like bro it's embarrassing for me because you're at my place of work like but these ankle monitors fucking suck dude they don't hold a charge I have to charge it while I'm at school which is fucking embarrassing and I just act like it's whatever i'm just like yeah (laughs) i have an ankle monitor like i act like i'm hot shit but really like i'm fucking embarrassed by this shit people can see it when i'm going up the stairs i can tell people like know about it because they're looking at me weird and it's bugging the shit out of me um and and if people would just ask me what the hell happened i wish i would have told like i wish i could have told them what happened but nobody asked me they just assumed they knew what was going on but yeah so this thing would go off and say that I'm not anywhere near where I'm supposed to be. And at three o'clock in the morning, they made me drive to the top of the hill. Um, I live at the bottom of the hill. They made me drive like a quarter mile away, uh, three quarters of a mile away, and then come back just to like get the location going again, which was stupid, just for me to stay out of jail. And um, I'm also on probation through Mason at this time. So whenever um, Mason calls me and tells me that I need to come in and piss, I have to go in and piss. Luckily, they never once called me to go in and piss we'll get there but i am on probation in these two places i have to go to court all the time and the lawyer i have is not the best lawyer dude i'm not going to mention his name but he cannot like get me off for anything and like it was clear cut that like they had nothing on me but yet they strung it out till january when it happened in october it it, i'm so angry i wish i would have had the lawyer i have now back then because it, it would have been such a simpler process. But um, where was I? It's hard for me to like piece all this together because at this time it's a blur. Um, I was so depressed that I stopped going to school. My senior year, I missed 96 days. I don't know if you know, but that's like uh, a lot of weeks of fucking school. Like there's only uh, nine weeks and a quarter. So five times nine is 45. I missed two fucking quarters of school and people are like, you know, you're not going to be able to graduate. So I'll get to that again in a second. But 
in December, finally, my lawyer um, and I go to court and they come to me and say, hey, somebody uh, went to the police and said that you've been in contact with your ex-girlfriend. Your pretrial probation uh, stipulates that you're not allowed to be in contact with her. So you're going to go to jail today. The prosecuting attorney for Mason comes over to us and says, we don't want to ruin your life type shit. He, she doesn't say it exactly like this. I'm paraphrasing, but she says, we don't want to ruin your life. Come back today at three, plead guilty to attempt to commit a crime. And you can walk out of here and just get six months on pro or a year on probation. Great. So happy that for four months, you could have just walked up to me and done that. So they just wanted fucking money, dude. Like that's all these fucking courts do is want money. And it's the issue with the fucking legal system nowadays. It's a bureaucracy. Everybody wants money and it's stupid. Like they're not even built to protect people. They're not even built to like protect the judicial system. They're, they're built to get money. Why do cops pull people over for traffic tickets? They pull people over to get money from tickets. It's different podcast. So I come back, I plead guilty. He doesn't sentence me to jail. He says that I'm going to put 180 days over your head if you violate probation, yada, yada, yada. Great. I go home. I get this ankle monitor off me. Fantastic. I'm home. I get to see my girlfriend, which low-key, now that the end of the story is over, I was seeing my girlfriend at the time. We don't have to talk about that. Um, It doesn't really matter, you know. So that is basically it for, like, my legal issues, really. Um, I mean, there was a point in time where I had to duct tape a Ziploc bag, fill it with a friend's, uh, piss, and then take like an air hose and string it through my dick and had to piss in a fucking like vial to prove that I didn't smoke weed because I was smoking weed. Yeah, I did that. I'm not proud of it. Like I said, I did shit I wasn't proud of and I was dumb. That's a felony, dude. I could have went to fucking prison for that shit, but you know, it is what it is. Like I had to do what I did and, oh, I didn't have to do what I did, but I did what I did. And it, it is what it is. I'm the person I am because of it. <sighs> yeah, I'm an idiot. I know. So getting back to the story, that's pretty much it for the legal troubles. I'm working at Dunkin' Donuts and I actually, I go, I'm pretty depressed. Like I move into this apartment and it's hard to pay rent because I was going to move in with somebody and they said that they didn't want to pay rent anymore. So I'm sitting here paying like this money that I can't afford to pay for this place because I don't want it to ruin my credit. And it, I'm getting pretty depressed. Nobody wants to hang out with me, um, you know, and I get into this period where I'm pretty sad. I'm not a sad. I'm not sad anymore. Just so you guys know, like I'm pretty good with my depression. So when I talk about depression, like just know that I'm in a good place now. So yeah but getting back to the story again um i i wanted to commit suicide one night i I wrote a letter to people telling them that i was going to commit suicide and my dumb ass forgot to it was a timed message so it would happen after like i did it my dumb ass forgot to delete the message i fell fucking asleep but yeah so that was like a big turning point like i quit my job the next day and my whole life changed after that, like really changed. Um, I quit my job. I moved back home with my parents. My girlfriend and I broke up. It devastated me, dude. I can remember sitting in my sofa chair, just staring at a blank television for hours on end. And I can look back on it now. And it seems cartoonish the way I see, like just the sun go down in my head. Like I can see it clear as day happen in two seconds, but it over the course it happened hours. So, while all this is happening, my older brother ends up going to prison. It turns out that he is the Breaking Bad of Fayetteville, Ohio with his mother. And they're coming up with like new ways to make meth and all this shit, doing different chemical reactions. And like the fucking DEA is watching them and shit. They get raided and he goes to prison for three years. So that happens. Devastates me. You know, so uh, two things have devastated me on top of losing an apartment and quitting my job. I am in a very, very low place right now. Um, You know, this I would say this is about November. Um, December comes along. Christmas fucking sucks because I'm alone, you know, um, at the time. 
it sucked. It didn't, I mean, I wish I would have spent it differently. I wish I would have been a different mindset. Now I'm in a good mindset. I wish I was in that mindset then. But yeah, December comes along and January comes along. And one night I wake up to my dogs barking their heads off and I can't figure out what they're barking at. Nor, I mean, they're good dogs. They know that if something's outside and they bark, like there better be something outside. So they're barking and I, I, I can't see anything. And at the same time, my dad's phone starts ringing. So I go and I answer my dad's phone and it's my grandmother. And I say hello. And she goes, I can't find your dad. He, 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 the doors are locked. This, he's not in here. His keys are here. I can't find him. And he's calling. She said your dad, because she thinks that she's on the phone with my dad. And I say, it's Brandon. I'm going to wake up my dad. We're going to go outside. We're going to try to find him. Um, this is, I believe, January 2nd, and it is the coldest night of the year. It's negative 8 degrees outside, um, and yeah. So I wake up my dad. My dad's in his underwear. He sleeps in his underwear. He has to put his clothes on, but I'm, I'm out the door. I'm trying to find my grandfather. I yell outside, and I go, I yell, Papa, and he goes, what? And I said, where are you? He goes, playing in the snow. So I run over to where he's at, and... He is in pajama bottoms, wearing only pajama bottoms. He is, he's a rather overweight man who's very sick, and he had a dementia episode for the first time ever in his life. And what had happened was he woke up my grandmother saying that he wanted water. He, at that point, left the room. My grandmother went back to sleep. He locked the door behind him went outside in the snow and with no shoes on slipped and fell down a hill he rolled down a hill um you could if you went out the next day in the snow you would have been able to see the fingerprints the handprints the footprints i know all this because i was the one who found him he reached out to me like a little boy needing help up and it terrified me um i I'm I'm not a I'm not a very strong individual physically. I I couldn't pick him up. I had to wait for my dad to come outside, and he's looking at me, wondering why I can't help him up, and it's I just can't. So my dad comes out, and he and I both together, we can't carry him in. And I tell my dad, I can't. I said, let me go get my car, and we'll put him in my car because I can pull it up here, and we'll turn the heat on, and I'll drive around to get the heat going quicker. So that's what we do until the ambulance gets there because he needs an ambulance. We d- we're driving around and I'm in the car. I'm asking him like what happened. We can't find the dog right now. It turns out the dog's actually inside. But I'm like, where, where's Blackie? That's the dog's name. And he goes, I, I don't know where I'm at. I, I tell him what's happening. He says he's scared. And to hear my... To hear my... 78 year old grandfather tell me that he's scared it's not something i'm ever going to forget but it's not something i want to remember either and he i just i i i put a blanket over him i I take my coat off i'm now in a t-shirt and i just i put my coat around him he's covered in snow packed snow like it's trying to melt off but my my i forgot to put antifreeze in my car and it, it, it and the, the heater won't work, essentially. It's it's taking forever for the heater to work. So the heat doesn't even click on until like the last two minutes before the, the ambulance even gets there. So the, the ambulance pulls in. They, they take him to Bethesda. They ask me if I want to ride in the back, and I, I couldn't. I wish I did. To this day, I regret that I didn't, but I couldn't. I, I needed to be in my car. I needed to be able to... To be honest, I needed to be able to fucking leave and be able to smoke, bro. Like, I could not go to this like I'm terrified like I I just woke up it's four o'clock in the morning and I need a fucking dab bro like I can't believe this just happened like I needed a dab as shitty as that is bro like I can't like some people need a shot some you know I I needed that so we go to the hospital we get there and they say that he's hypothermic yada 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 they they put this machine on him to warm him up and as everything starts to subside they say we're gonna send him home he stands up and his foot pretty much just explodes from the pressure from the frostbite and they say he's not going home so they keep him there 
And long story short, over the next month, his dementia increases and I don't have full knowledge of everything that happened. I purposefully forgot, I'm, just, I'm sure. But my dad says, hey, I need you to go take your grandmother up to the hospital because your grandpa has like this thing that he needs to do. So I pull the car up. My grandma gets in and my dad calls me. He says, hey, they just took your grandfather off the respirator. He's, they said that he's breathing some odd times a minute. And my dad said, tell him that I love him for me. And that's not what I've wanted. You know, that's, that's not what I wanted to hear. My grandfather was probably my best friend. You know, if you haven't figured out, he lived directly next door to me. And he was always, he was outside every day working on lawnmowers. And he would always ask me for help one time, like several times, he would ask me to help him find a screw that he dropped. And he said, it looks like this. He's thinking he's holding up a screw that's identical to the one he's looking for. And it's a fucking stick, dude. I said, that's a stick. He goes, well, it looks like that, (laughs) you know? So uh, my grandfather was my best friend. And if anybody had ever met him, will tell you that he was the brightest soul that anybody could ever meet. And he, you know, he had an eighth grade education. He broke his back when he was very young and couldn't work, relied on my grandmother to work. And yeah, but long story short, over the month, his dementia worsened. And like I said, that day we get down there and it's imprinted in my brain the way he looked if 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 you're sensitive i don't recommend you listen to this part you might want to skip ahead a little bit but he they had removed everything all the wires and stuff and he's just laying there i told you before he was an overweight man but he's his neck was skinny and his face was skinny at this point and he just kept making short inhaled breaths over and over again and I couldn't be there. I didn't want to be there. I didn't know. I I honestly didn't know that he was going to die. I didn't. I didn't. I was delusional. Maybe I was maybe stupid. I just I didn't expect him to die so soon. So I leave. And when I come back home, my mom knocks on my window as soon as I pull in, knocks on my car window and says, he just died. We need to go down to the hospital. And I've never been the same since then. I start having nightmares. I start every night nightmares. I I can't I don't want to sleep. I start seeing him in my dreams every night. I don't want to sleep. It gets bad. I can't go to work because I don't sleep. So Um Yeah. Eventually I meet Dolly again we met in high school but I meet Dolly again and we end up moving in fairly quickly this is again what I'm gonna allude to like I didn't make the best decisions and this is nothing to harp on Dolly and I because we're good now we were not very smart individuals we both came from really bad breakups really traumatic individuals so um there's nothing to say that anything negative like now we're good but at the time we weren't good to live together so we moved in together like a month in because we thought that we knew each other from high school and we um we would fight a lot and i would stay up till four o'clock in the morning because of my grandfather i was very depressed and eventually i get to the point where I have to get a job in order to get things going again. So I start working at a place called Lolly and Pops. It's a candy store as the inventory manager. I'm thinking the colors will help, the brightness will help, and a new change of environment will help. It's in a mall, so all the people might help. Um, And yeah, so to spare um, details and like to save some time because these stories are irrelevant, um, I am at Lolly and Pops for a very long time. Dolly and I break up and 
the store goes bankrupt, I get demoted to like a shift leader and then promoted back again to an assistant manager um, while I'm there. And then COVID happens. My grandfather died in 2018. Um, 2019, um, Christmas season goes through as the, I'm the inventory manager. We filed bankruptcy in like February and then um, coronavirus happens in March. So during March, I, you know, I'm all alone. I'm sure you guys know how coronavirus was. Um, actually, I think that's where I'm going to end today's podcast because I'm 52 minutes in. So, so I appreciate you guys listening to me. The next podcast I'm going to talk about, um, you know, my life during COVID and the art and how I went from not even knowing what the fuck, you know, painting was to doing what I do today. So, um, I also want to mention, thank you guys for listening to this podcast. It means a lot to me. Actually, I had no idea that anybody would be listening. So if you made it this far, you're a real one. Um, I'm going to be having guests on soon. People that I've never met people. I've met some of my best friends. Um, I'm looking forward to it, dude. This is going to be an exciting portion of my life. So yeah thank you guys um stay weird stay wild i love you